Welcome back. This year, Time magazine named President Nicolas Maduro one of its 100 most influential people. Time said an economic collapse in Venezuela hinges on whether Nicolas Maduro can step out of the shadow of his mentor, Hugo Chavez. Well, joining us now is Laura Rojas, an economist with over 20 years of experience in international economic policy, and from Chicago, George Sitcarello Maher, a political science professor at Drexel University and the author of We Created Chavez, A People's History of the Venezuelan Revolution. Thanks to both of you for joining us. Laura, we just heard our last guest say that there is no quick fix for Venezuela. The protests are going to continue. Do you believe that to be the case as well? Well, uh, thank you for having me here. Um, there are two uh, sides in this uh, crisis. Uh, one is the economy. And as we all know, uh, the economy is doing really bad. And it can go the, even worse uh, if the, the uh, government doesn't take uh, the right measures and in the very short term. And the other one is the, the political side. And the political side depends pretty much on the dialogue and the government also opening up uh, to the um, uh, to what the protesters uh, uh, want. Uh, so everything goes uh, back uh, to uh, the government and what the government is really willing uh, to do in the short term. So I am uh, cautiously optimistic because I still believe there is uh, opportunities uh, for the dialogue uh, on the political um, uh, side. And I do believe the government is still have uh, a space for taking appropriate measures to correct the, uh, to correct the economy. Uh, but up to now, the government hasn't showed uh, the willingness uh, to take those measures. Uh, so we have to see. OK, quite a few things there. Let's go to George. George, do you believe that the ball is now in the court of Nicolas Maduro? He has to make the first move. He has to reach out to the opposition to get this crisis defused. Well, I think the ball is certainly in the court of the government, but I think we need to be a little careful here and recall that uh, that there's an elected government of Venezuela. It's This is not a situation in which um, the, an unelected opposition can really hold the government hostage, although I think dialogue is important. It's important to begin to hash through some of these things, in part because it's not just the concerns of some of these protesters in the streets, but there are some systematic concerns that affect uh, the vast majority of Venezuelans, economic difficulties, the question of security, um, and these are these go far beyond, uh, you know, be, beyond the protest in the streets and they extend to the Chavista base and and so we want to have a, a dialogue among all sectors of Venezuelan society that that speaks with these protesters in the in the streets that speaks with the political opposition but that also takes into account uh, the Chavista base the revolutionary movements that are uh, that support this government but that are demanding radical changes as well okay George how does one explain a country that has uh, the largest oil reserves in the world and an economy that's in such bad shape well, in some senses, the answer is in the question, because some of these problems are, are nearly endemic problems to oil economies, um, and they're problems that need to be dealt with in a very decisive manner. There are things that have been, there have been sort of half steps, half, half steps to deal with certain things, questions of especially the exchange rate need to be dealt with more decisively in the future. Um, and the tangle of the import sector in Venezuela is really a, a complex one, and it's, it's not one that's going to be eradicated as a problem until Venezuela begins to develop in a more sustained way a productive base, something which hasn't existed. It's not the fault of this contemporary government, but which has been declining and really disappearing for, for 30 years now. Laura, uh, we just heard George there say that the government is not decisive. It's only taking half steps. I mean, does this government lack a clear, coherent policy on how it tackles the economy? I mean, is it just applying what I could call, say, a Band-Aid to the problem by just increasing social spending all the time? Uh, there are two uh, several things here, uh, and I want to respond to what uh, George uh, just mm -hmm. said, uh, because it, it's not a matter of the opposition taking a hostage uh, the government. Uh, we had to take into account that recent polls uh, shows that 69% that of the population uh, think uh, that the Maduro government is doing very wrong, and that the, the uh, that the um, uh, country is going in the wrong direction. So it's not just the opposition, it's just the whole population, uh, which is uh, thinking that the economy, the, uh, uh, the politics, and, and uh, the, the crime, uh, the, the inflation, I mean, everything is really uh, going, uh, uh, going bad, uh, okay? And the, the second thing about uh, what the 
the problems and structural problems of this uh, uh, of this uh, economy. Uh, th that is true. There are some structural problems, uh, but the government has been in power for 15 years and has had the highest uh, uh, oil income in the Venezuelan history. Uh, before uh, uh, Chavez, uh, the economy was very volatile because the oil market uh, has been very volatile. But during these 15 years, that hasn't been the case. Uh, so the, there's no reason, no uh, exp possible explanation or rational explanation for being in this uh, uh, crisis okay. other than total ignorance about uh, how an economy really works. All right, let me ask George to respond to that. George? Sure, I would say firstly, I mean, with regard to polls, I think we should take the polls with a grain of salt. Anyone that knows Venezuela knows that these polls are very politicized. And we should remember these protests actually emerged in the immediate aftermath of municipal elections in which the Chavistas did very well, you know, showing that they were still a majority. And now whether or not that's still the case is, is an open question. But the reality is that we need to bear in mind that, again, this is a government that's been elected. And I, and I do think that, you know, there are, there's a great deal that could be done with the economy that needs to be done um, to help uh, deal with these economic uh, questions, but it's not simply a question of, of, of a Band-Aid fix, and it's not simply the case that the Venezuelan government over the course of 15 years has accomplished nothing. We're talking about dramatic decreases in poverty. We're talking about Venezuela becoming more equal, and we're talking about the, the government and the, and the social movements and the population engaging in some very interesting experiments with popular and direct democracy that are, you know, that constitute an uphill battle against some of these structural difficulties of the, of the Petro state, but which nevertheless need to be recognized as, as important instances. Okay, Laura, where does it go to from here? Is there a role, say, for international mediation to get these two sides to talk? Uh, I think that international mediation has been very important. Uh, the uh, presence of the Vatican uh, and the presence of uh, uh, UNASUR, of, of uh, the foreign ministers, have been very important in providing um, some uh, framework of credibility uh, to the to the dialogue. Um, the, I think the opposition uh, needed uh, some uh, uh, support from uh, the uh, from the international community, and uh, uh, the government has been uh, pushed by uh, uh, the the um, that international community into uh, the the dialogue. Uh, unfortunately, the government hasn't been willing uh, to adopt uh, measures uh, that uh, in in that framework. Okay, I just want to go to George. George, I want to get your view on one idea that is percolating here in the United States, especially uh, among Republican Party politicians, that's the opposition uh, in the United States, and that is to impose targeted sanctions on certain leaders in Venezuela. Is that going to be, is that going to help the situation or is that going to be a setback? Well, it depends on what you mean by help the situation. For the for the opposition in Venezuela, this would be a disastrous uh, strategy. Um, and you know, I, I was hearing recently that actually it's very common in Miami for Venezuelan opposition members to to be in support of sanctions. But on the ground in Venezuela, it's a much more dangerous and indeed politically suicidal perspective or, or strategy to take because what it is essentially saying is that we can't solve our own problems. We're asking for the you know the empire of the north to step in and and solve them for us. And this has actually been a messaging problem of these. Movements from day one with the entire sort of SOS Venezuela hashtag, which seems to suggest some kind of intervention. And the more that this Venezuelan opposition looks like an, an, an opposition calling for foreign intervention, uh, the more it will be an opposition that cannot win elections in the future and will be incapable of building the kind of majority that some of the opposition leaders, like Enrique Capriles, recognize they need to do. Laura, very quickly, I've got 20 seconds. Um, the international uh, sanctions are a tool uh, in the hands of the international community to help uh, any country uh, with uh, such a polarization. Uh, I don't think it's a matter of uh, Venezuelan uh, relying on the international community to solve the problems. It's a matter of uh, uh, pushing the government in the right direction to take uh, measures uh, like, uh, for example, uh, um, replacing uh, persons in the um, uh, national and uh, na uh, the national council of uh, of um, okay. the electoral committee. We're going to have to leave it there. Laura Rojas, okay. George Chicarello, Maher talking to us from Chicago. Thanks to both of you for joining us. We're going to take a break right now. In a moment, we'll continue our discussion on the crisis in Venezuela and the threat of U.S. sanctions with a veteran diplomat. Stay with us here on the Heat.